As you begin to settle in, make a survey of the body, make a survey of your mind. In terms of the body, make sure that everything is balanced. You're not leaning forward, back, left, right. You're facing straight ahead. You relax the different joints. You might start it up at the top of the head and go down, 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 down. Make sure that everything is relaxed, but in place. In other words, anything that would pull you out of alignment, you relax. Make a survey of your mind. Is it frenetic? Is it sleepy? Is it tired? What state is it in right now? As the Thai Johns would say, make sure that it too is not leaning forward or back, left or right, forward to the future, back to the past, left and right to things you like or don't like. Just try to be aware right here. When everything is in place, okay, then you focus on the breath. And remember to think of the breath, not so much as the air, but as the energy flow in the body. Because that's what you experience first, and that's what you can experience anywhere, anywhere in the body. In the modern world, with all our screens, we tend to be focused in our eyes. And then from our eyes, we have the idea that we're looking at the rest of the body through our eyes. But to counteract that one, just focus on the eyes and themselves. Think of the breath energy coming in, going through the eyelids, around the eyeballs. Think of the blood being able to flow there smoothly. This is the area of the body that tends to be used most as we think. Little tiny muscles in the blood vessels contract and expand as we think. So think of them all opening up, so that the blood can flow. In other words, instead of using the eyes to look at the rest of the, your body, you're using the rest of the body to look at your eyes. And then from there, think of backing into the rest of the body, rather than looking at it through the front of the eyes. Back into the neck, back into the back, down the legs. And when things get very still, just stay there. Protect that. Part of the mind will say, well, what's next? And after all, you have to say, well, there's this. If it's still, protect it. And that's her, what level of jhana it is. Remember that when Ajahn Fung was teaching, he never talked about the jhanas. Ajahn Li would talk about them. But that was because he was teaching at a time when the party line in Bangkok was at the time for jhana was passed. The time, of course, for nirvana was passed. It's part of the government policy to get monks to teach in schools. And so to counteract that, Ajahn Li had to talk very explicitly about jhana. But John Fu may have noticed that when people think about jhana, they start comparing their jhanas with other people's jhanas. So to avoid that, he wouldn't talk about jhana. He had it out the book that talked about jhana, and you could look for yourself. But he would never certify you as having this, that, or another jhana. It's up to you to decide. And I found that by staying with him, it was good to think of your identification of this state and that state as post-it notes, that as you got to know the territory better, you could move the notes around. But you don't have to put notes on it. Aside from noticing that when the mind settles down, it settles down in different ways. 
Sometimes it settles down really solidly very quickly. Other times it takes a while to kind of drift down into place. And once it's there, you find that it's natural to stay centered in one part or another. You want to get good at several parts. Because there are times when focusing up in the head can lead to headaches. So you move your attention down. And again, try not to have the sense that you're up in the head looking down into the chest, say. Try to be in the chest. Try to be in the abdomen, wherever you choose as your spot. And notice that there's an awareness already there. And you don't have to impose your notions of breath on that. Just tell yourself, whatever I feel there, that must be breath. What does that tell me about breath? Learn from that, rather than telling it what it's supposed to do. When you have that attitude of being receptive to what's going on, it's a lot easier to settle in, in a way that both the body and the mind feel like they fit together. And then find the right balance and how to maintain that. You have to stay attentive, but not tense, and be as consistent as you can. And then beginning the concentration tends to have a quality of coming in phrases like phrases in music. Because the breath comes in phrases, comes in, stops, goes out, stops. But remember, there's also a quality of breath energy in the body that's very continuous. And there's an awareness that matches that continuous breath. See if you can get in touch with that. I'm trying not to divide it up into phrases. Make sure that the whole body is aware, or your awareness so that the whole body has a chance to, to show itself. You're in touch with it. And then maintain. As John Fuhrman once said, there are three stages to the practice. Doing it. In other words, getting the mind to settle in, maintaining, learning how to keep it, learning how to talk to yourself while you're keeping it. It's a very minimal kind of talking. Sometimes it, there are sentences, and sometimes it's just a word, an image. Or you find a particular sensation that feels really good and continuous, and you just tell yourself, stay here. And learn how to get nourishment from this. That technique of letting the blood flow all around the eyes. That nourishes all the little muscles that are used for thinking. And you find you can do the same thing with the blood vessels in different parts of the body, letting everything be as full as possible, open as possible so the blood can flow well and everything gets nourished. And again, resist any tendency that the mind has to say, well, what's next? When are we going to get to the third stage, which is to use this? And for the time being, just learn how to maintain. Hover around it. Keep it here. Have some respect for your concentration. We have that chant where the Buddha talks about respect. And it's interesting there. He talks about respect for the training, which means, of course, the triple training. Heightened virtue, heightened mind, i.e. concentration, heightened discernment. And then he adds, respect for concentration. And he says, it's already included in the training. Why does he have to add concentration again? Because it's because people tend to overlook it, not to value it. 
after all, we've read so much about how you don't want to get stuck on concentration and the real business in the meditation is the discernment. But a lot of discernment comes from just being with the concentration. That part of the mind that's ants in and move on. When you can learn how to relax that. The antsiness, the tension, dissolves away, and you see that it was getting in the way. Has some actually interesting insights to arise. So tune in. And stay tuned in. Think of what Dogen had to say about the Third and the Fourth Noble Truth. He didn't say that the goal was the path, but he said the activity of developing the path and the activity of realizing the cessation of suffering, those are the same thing. In other words, you don't have to second-guess the path. You don't have to look down the path and say, when's the next stage going to come? You focus right here. And as right here develops, you'll see what you want to see. And John Cha has an image where he says the path is like a mango. You look at a mango and you say, well, where's the, where's the beginning, where's the end? That's the point. You get the whole mango, and you just let the whole mango develop. And in its wholeness, it will develop in directions you may not have expected. That's where the mind and the path is very different from a mango. You can, you can ex pretty much expect what mangoes are going to do. But this one develops in ways that take you to places you didn't expect, as the Buddha said, to attain the as yet unattained, to realize the as yet unrealized. But it's all right here. Simply allow it to develop. Once you've got this stage, then, then the using it for the sake of discernment will become a lot clearer. So patience, steadiness, consistency, learn to regard those as real virtues.